didn't grow up in that particular community, even though they may have grown up in diverse neighborhoods, if their communities that they're assigned to are 99% whatever, and those are the only individuals that they issue citations, make arrests, get calls on, settle disturbances on, if you don't train for it, on-the-job biases can creep in, and people will begin to feel like that individuals that may look a certain way, dress a certain way, may have problems with the law. So that's why we do situational training. Focus on the conduct and behavior, not the individual. Yep. And it's certainly we're going to increase our training when it comes to de-escalation techniques and covering concealment. Yeah, in that context, uh, as you probably know, Council Member Bradford has been urging a type of incentive uh, uh, bonus for officers to move into certain targeted neighborhoods. Is there any likelihood that that can occur under the new contract? Ask him to the chief of police qualify, because I live in the inner city neighborhood. Well, yes, and, and he did, but he, <laughs> yeah. I want the first check. Okay. No, I support the idea and the concept. And, and the concept that have been initiated in other cities around the country. Uh, if a police officer moves into a certain neighborhood, just because that officer lives in that neighborhood, whether he or she is assigned to work that neighborhood, they will ensure that there is some type of community cohesion. That if the community is having a problem, they will ensure that uh, the proper resources get addressed uh, uh, or get, you know, placed on the problem. And to a certain extent, that's true. I, I know it's, it's no different in my neighborhood. Now, because of who I am and every one of the neighbors on my street and in my neighborhood, they know who I am, they know where I live. So if there's a problem, in the community, in my neighborhood, they contact me directly. They just come over and knock on the door, and they know that I'm going to do something about it. It's the same concept, and I support that. I really do. I have two questions. If you want to ask. Okay. Uh, the first one's related to the ongoing uh, news as far as uh, an alleged assassination plot uh, related to Occupy Houston and sniper rifles. Just this last week, a judge ruled that the FBI did not have to disclose any further documents to reveal the names of who was apparently plotting, which apparently involved some violent organizations in Houston that were working with uh, the FBI's confidential informants. And uh, none of the names are going to be released as far as what activists may have been targeted by this plot. So I just was curious if you have any information as what knowledge HPD had of the FBI's coordination of that event, or if you have any new information related to that. I have no knowledge of the event at all. And the second question I have for you is related to uh, what I asked you last night regarding the use of Stingray cell phone surveillance. After um, I asked you last night, I went back and I looked over the contract, and I did misspeak uh, on one thing. It was a contract with the City of Houston and Harris Corporation. But they go back from 2007 and they were renewed as recently as 2012, specifically for the Houston Police Department to use the device known as Stingray, Stingfish, and the additional device known as the Harpoon. So, and you also talked with this with Jace Larson uh, from Channel 2 KPRC, but last night you denied that they exist. So I just wanted to give you another opportunity to correct that or explain on your knowledge of that program and that tool and how citizens should feel knowing that the police department has this device that indiscriminately gathers their information. So well, as I told you last night, Derek, and I've said many, many times uh, in the past to Jace Larson, I'm not going to discuss any specific investigative tools and techniques that the Houston Police Department has. I will say this, that any tools or techniques that we use to resolve crimes, we do so in a constitutional manner whether we get some type of judicial review or what. 
Um, you, you mentioned earlier that the, the signing bonus will be going away. Could you just explain briefly how the new contract will eliminate the need for that? Yes. Uh, we won't be offering the $5,000 bonus after the main class because uh, once, if and when the new um, meet and confer agreement is passed, then uh, starting pay for cadets and first year officers will increase to make us a little bit more competitive with um, uh, agencies uh, around the state. And, and certainly uh, Captain Robert Manzo is here and can answer any questions regarding our recruiting efforts and where we stand with, with some of those challenges. But, but yes, that's why it will be going away. Do you hope this new contract with increased um, 